Hi everyone, welcome to DIY Ideas. Today I'll show you how you can do a knitted version of a headband. So I used the same wool for another crocheted version of this and I did a third video comparing those two. So here is our wool. It's called Crazy Sexy Wool from Wool and the Gang. It's 100% wool, which means it's super warm and super cuddly. And the needle size is 12 for both knitting and crocheting. We have 200 grams here and yeah, that's pretty heavy. I used a little bit of it, so it's a little bit less than that. We have 87 yards or 80 meters. So if you use one spool, you can get two headbands out of it, so you don't need more than that. And apart from that, for today's project, we're gonna be needing knitting needles, which is what I have here. This time connected, you can of course use regular ones, so I'll do this in rows this time. And it's gonna be super simple, we're gonna do just knit stitches, so this means that it's also really suitable for beginners, so even if you don't have experience, stay tuned. I have here my darning needle and my scissors so that we can weave all of the end threads in when we're done. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start. I'll leave about 20 centimeters or about 8 inches and we will start our stitches. I have my thread going down my palm and now I'll go between my fingers like this and I'll form a little stitch by pulling this upwards. The section we started with, so away from the spool, goes around my thumb and the rest around my index finger. Then I'll go under this thread of my thumb, above the one on my index finger, and I'll start my stitch again. And we keep doing this till we get the desired number of stitches. I'll do a total of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six stitches. So now we can turn this whole thing and take the working thread onto our left needle. This first stitch we are transferring to our working needle, so our third one. We put the working thread behind the left needle, we go with the right needle through the stitch and pull the thread through. And then we repeat the motions for the rest of our stitches. And here are all of our needles on one needle, or stitches on our needle, the six here. And we can turn again and start over. So we are again doing the same thing. It's a super simple way to do stitches and after a couple of rows you'll really get the hang of it and you'll get a lot faster at it as well. Turn again and continue. The first stitch we always transfer and the five we do knitwise. And I'll do this for the entire length of my headband, so in my case about 50 centimeters. 
So I like to do a little bit less than what my actual head circumference really is. So for example, if I had 54 centimeters that I measured, I'd do 50 or 51 centimeters of length. By doing a bit less, you make sure your headband doesn't slip off of your head when you wear it, but making it too small is not good either since it would really put pressure on your head. So just make sure you stay close to your head size and you should be just fine. And you can also notice that the stitches are super simple to do, even if you're a beginner. Here are the edge stitches forming the V's on both sides. And yeah, I'll continue with the same method now. So here is my headband, it's about 50 centimeters of length, perfect. So here is my ending where I stopped and now I can show you the amazing pattern we got. So you can see these waves that we have all over and when we pull those apart we can see the little V's that are kind of hiding in the back of the waves. So it's pretty great. When you don't pull it you see just the wavy pattern and here is the whole thing, so black, white and gray this time. So when you get your desired height, you can cast the stitches off. So take the stitch onto the needle. We transfer the first one. Second one we do knitwise, then the first one we take and pull over the second one like this. And now we cast off our first stitch, then we can move on to the next one. Pull over and then again do the same with the following one. Make sure your needle stays in place, you don't want to lose your stitches. Here is the same thing, so pull, and then you can see the effect, the V's here on top, and that's what we call casting stitches off. So now we can connect the beginning and the end into our headband shape. So take about 40 to 50 centimeters of length and then cut the thread off and you can pull it out of your last cast off stitch. Pull tight and we don't want anything weird going on here anymore so that's secure now. And now we can take our darning needle and pull the thread through. So I'm using an XXL version because it's a lot easier to work with. 
Anyway, we take the two ends, we go through one stitch on the one side and one on the other as well, and then we pull. And we repeat that with all of the stitches we see. This is what forms a really nice headband shape, but we could do this for loop scarves as well. It's the same method. One more time. And here is our result now. So you can see here the connected piece. You can wear it like that if you like, but you can also do another optional trick for hiding the connected part. So I'm taking the thread that I left here and I'll take the needle out because we don't need it anymore. Okay, and then I'll pull the beginning and end and go around my headband with both. The beginning thread ends here, so I'll hide it with the end thread and keep going. And that's good. I think it looks super cute. Make sure to fix it so that it looks nice and neat the way you want it to and then we can shorten our leftover thread. So we want about 10 to 15 centimeters or I don't know about 6 to 7 inches and then we need our darning needle again. So we go through this section, maybe even through some stitches. And then back. Here as well, and back again. And I'll cut it super short now and our headband is done. So we have here both sides, so you can wear it from both sides, they are completely the same. So this last step we did was optional, but I think it's a really nice way to hide the section where we connect the two ends. And I think it looks super stylish in the end as well. So this is it. Super warm and super cuddly, great for cold weather. And of course, I'll show you the crocheted version here as well. So I'll do a separate video where I compare the two pieces in the end when I have both of them done. So that way you can kind of see which one you like better, crocheting or knitting, and try both out. So yeah, thanks for watching DIY Ideas. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you can let us know by shooting a thumbs up. And if you'd like to stay updated with everything new that we post, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.